Hello guys, just Goron here and welcome back to building the base fair. I am back, actually, yeah, welcome back indeed, because it has been quite a while. I've been camping with the Boy Scouts, I've been with my girlfriend for about three weeks, uh, first at her parents' place, then at my parents' place, and then uh, at my apartment. Uh, so, yeah, I took a big bit of a break. I hope you guys have been enjoying the download of the park that I put available um, before I left. I've watched a person stream touring the park which was really fun and I've uh, received a lot of nice comments on the Steam Workshop so I want to thank everyone for that. But now we are back and I've already done a number of things because I had a pretty big to-do list of little things that I've noticed on people uh, on, on the stream that I saw, which was by uh, Pacha Kmac. Um, while he was streaming, I noticed a few things that were off and I just had a bunch of other stuff uh, that I wanted to change. So let's quickly go over those. First of all, the parking lot, I actually didn't do anything to yet. It's just, I really don't feel like it. Uh, the parking lot is actually the first thing that I did when I started this project. And yeah, there needs to be a lot of terrain elevation changes over here. Um, while I was visiting the zoo the other day uh, with my girlfriend and her parents, uh, her father, parks over here. I had no idea there was even a parking place over here. But yeah, there's this whole area where you can park and then there's this little path going along the water and you can walk over here and then you get to this path which I've altered to be two meter wide uh, from which you can see the gibbons and for once I actually saw the gibbons. I've never actually seen these before. Um, in any of my like 10 plus visits to the zoo I've never seen them but uh, yeah this time he was walking around or she and uh, and chilling and oh I just realized there's actually a detail we're missing here which I'm gonna write down because they do have a little bit of shelter in uh, hanging in this tree where uh, she was actually he or she was actually sitting so um, yeah that is that now let's actually go into the park and we get to a pretty big mistake, which was that there was a typo, or can you even call it a typo? <laughs> it was a mistake in uh, this piece of text. It said, Safai Souvenirs. I forgot the R, which I noticed on uh, Patrick KMX stream, and uh, I was really embarrassed, but I don't think anyone else noticed ever. So that's good. <laughs> it's fixed now, so that's that's fine. Then if we go to over here, I added a bunch more extra foliage. Um, every time I visit the zoo, there is more foliage because, surprise, surprise, it's growing. <laughs> so I keep adding stuff, but I feel like at some point I should just stop. Uh, the main new addition is this banana plant and these ones, which are the... I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. <laughs> um, which is not probably not the actual tree that it is there, but it looks like it, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so let's go around where we will see a very big change, or well, it's a small change, but it was a lot of work. Uh, if we take it right over here, we get to these giant tusks, which I had made out of these things at first, which got the idea across but it didn't look right because and, and I definitely did want to make it right because these are some of the most iconic things of the zoo uh, when you take your car safari and you drive through these uh, and again at the end of the car safari there's another set of tusks that you drive on there and it's kind of yeah the, one of the most iconic things of the zoo I guess so I really wanted to get them right and um, they're made up out of all these little planks, which was a tremendous amount of work, but I think it's worth it. And if we ever get a TMTK or the Toolmaker or the Theme Makers Toolkit that Planet Coaster had, we can probably replace them with uh, something a bit more neat. But for now, they all do the job and they look pretty good. And I was actually surprised because I made it out of those small planks and I was afraid 
that the draw distance would be really bad, but you can actually zoom out quite far with them still being visible, like only now they start to disappear. So that's actually really good. Then over here in the forest, I'm still working on it, but I'm adding some more foliage to make it look a little bit more, well, a little bit less barren, I guess. And over here is also a small thing, is this electrical box that I made, um, which is there. Yeah, so I added that. Something I missed at the entrance is this over here. I made this little mural, which uh, I'm actually quite happy with. I really like the shape that I ended up having. And, well, you can tell it's a zebra, so <laughs> that's a success as well. So yeah, that, I forgot about that. Now let's get back in, into the zoo. And one stupid change that I had to fix, it was that the streamer actually found a grill over here, just sitting in the springbok habitat, which was really weird. So. I removed that, but the biggest change in this area is the goat habitat. Over here we have our lovely little goat. And you might remember, or actually let's go over the pictures of what this habitat used to look like. So the main thing that I wanted to do to this area was fix the um, tree cages, the little fences around the trees, because you might know that before I left. I found this little exploit that allows you to make barriers infinitely short and also we have the trick to make them have no posts and with that I can make some really cool looking things. So that was the main thing that I wanted to do here, just fix those tree cages. But to do that, um, to do those exploits, I would have to uh, get rid of the path for a moment. And that's when I was already starting to debate whether or not I was going to change the way uh, the path was. But anyway, I removed the path and right away a goat jumped on top of the rocks. And also just the goats walked into the habitat a lot more than they did before. So even though the goats can traverse the path, which you might also know we're using an exploit to make it so that the guests don't run away from the goats. And I think using that exploit is making the goats uh, not want to really walk over there. So that's kind of when I decided, okay, we are going to change the path. But first, doing the cages, so they are all the steps of that. It's quite tedious and it takes quite a lot of effort, but the result is pretty good. I'm really happy with how the cages look now. But yeah, then I rerouted the path to be kind of not go as far into the cage as much as it did. And yeah, that's what we have now. So we have the goats right over here and yeah you before they would all hang out over here and never go into the habitat at all and now they're all chilling over here and occasionally they will jump on the rocks i just saw one even walk back here so yeah i'm really really happy with that decision it made this habitat a lot more alive and um, yeah a lot more like it is in real life as well so it's just really really cool so today after all that catching up, we are going to be working on the next area. So yeah, we are going to be going over here. We are going to go along this route and get started on the zebu and the tigers. And probably also this as well in the near future. So we have a nice view of what's going to be the yaks. Okay, sorry for any background noise, it just rained and I really really want it to cool down in here so I've got all my windows and everything opened. But let's get to what I've been working on. I have laid out a couple of habitats over here. First of all we have the Zebu, which is kind of an African species of cow I believe from what I understand. And uh, they've got this nice little habitat that's kind of going to be a foresty area with a lot of Scots pine. And their habitat connects to this pond over here. Where they uh, can drink from. I don't think they ever swim in there. But yeah, they can't really go anywhere from that either way. I'm thinking of using wildebeest uh, to copy the zebus. Because they're also kind of a bovine species, I think. Okay, right, not really. But, I don't know, the other option is the uh, African buffalo, but that one is already 
being used over here to mimic as what Tushi cattle and we're actually going to have actual African buffaloes as well so yeah I don't think I want to use those quite yet uh, so I think wildebeest is a good choice but then we get to the real deal over here we have the Amur tigers also known as the Siberian tigers and they've got three separate habitats because uh, you can't have that many in one habitat I suppose so yeah, they've got some pretty cool habitats over here and I've get, gotten started on getting those in place. Uh, the main difficulty was this piece of fence that I still have to clean up a little bit here and there, but yeah. Uh, from the viewer perspective, you've got a very nice view onto the habitat, but you are separated by this big moat where the tigers actually swim in and do stuff like that. And the moat is surrounded by this uh, corrugated fence as well and there's going to be some uh, kind of railings over here it's going to be all sorts of protection and, and things like that and we have these climb proof uh, fences as well that are going to keep the tigers from going out and there's a bunch of shelter and I spent forever trying to get all of this stuff in place because as I was Looking at my screenshots of, of Google Maps, I noticed that there were a lot of stuff that were kind of not exactly in the right place. Also, since we are dealing with the edge of the map here, I have to kind of move everything a little bit to kind of make room for all the things that are still going to be back here. Which is kind of my mistake from not noticing that there is actually more back here earlier on in the project, but now it's too late. Uh, move everything so we're just gonna have to kind of compromise over here so yeah I spent most of the afternoon um, fixing up <laughs> all of that but now we've got that all in place and I can get to work on these habitats so um, I think before I move on to doing the third one because the third one is a lot more simple because it doesn't have all of this water stuff it just has a little pond in the middle so before I move on to all uh, to that habitat I'm gonna just keep working on these ones um, skipping the Zebus for now because I do want to make a couple more pictures of it um, and also it's just not that interesting in my opinion I really want to get to work on the tigers so yeah let's go alright the first habitat is pretty much finished the foliage is mostly in I, I want to add a lot more of course just smaller plants Details don't mind whatever is happening in the back that is just because I put the habitat gate on the ground but we've got ourselves a chunky boy, because Siberian tigers in this game are chunky chunky boys, look at him run. Oh, he's going straight for... What are you going straight for, my lord? What is your plan here? Are you going straight for a swim? Oh, look at you. Okay, let's see his traversal area and make sure he doesn't actually have any escape points. Nope, this habitat is perfectly fine for him. Look at that. And he's just enjoying a swim. I've never actually seen them um, done. I've never seen a tiger swim before in a zoo. I've seen them be afraid of the water, <laughs> just like any cat. But um, yeah, that's cool. So yeah, this is pretty much um, what the foliage in the other one is also going to look like. Just a bunch of scot spine. And then the behind the area is going to be very forested as well just kind of like with the cheetahs um, but yeah over here is really a lot of scott spine like the occasional birch there's also a broken birch but yeah mostly scott spine so i'm not sure if we are going to do the viewing areas as of yet because i kind of want to make a couple of extra pictures of them because uh, i've noticed i do this a lot so i really want to I, I, I should check before i get started on habitats um, or just before I, I go to the zoo again for like the upcoming habitats because I really tend to make pictures of the habitats but not of the viewing areas even though I really try to think about it but unless I make notes of it like I've got notes now and like make pictures of the tiger viewing areas but if I don't make notes I, I really tend to forget like I think the only place I actually have good pictures of in that sense is the red panda habitat because I've taken so many pictures of the red panda habitat that it just has to be pictures of the viewing areas as well but yeah I'm, uh, I'm terrible at that. 
but yeah, this is pretty much uh, what the habitats are going to look like. And then there's going to be some railings with, uh, well, railings. <laughs> um, and a lot of plants actually inside the railings as well. And yeah, and then once I make some pictures of these viewing areas, we're going to be able to build those as well. But that will probably be in a later episode. Okay, here we are with the next little update. You can see a bit of the viewing area has been constructed. This is kind of a uh, proof of concept, I suppose. I started with this uh, kind of guardrail, and then this is just a bit of viewing area I stole from uh, the entrance of the zoo. Uh, what I have over here is a bit more finalized. I don't know why I started with this one. I guess I had some better pictures of this. So yeah, it did turn out I had more pictures of the viewing area than I thought but I have less than I would like so I will not be working on it too much more until I visit the zoo again sometime next week. But yeah, let's uh, not ramble on too much. This is kind of the finalized viewing area uh, design. I've made this new sign <laughs> of a tiger. It's pretty jank but I mean all of these signs are. Um, by the way, if you ever download the zoo file, which I'll probably try to keep updated from now on, uh, over here is a little junk pile of some custom stuff that I've made, including some dolls, some signs, uh, and pretty much all of these custom education signs. And I've written down what species they are meant to represent, in case it's not clear enough. Uh, yeah, they are pretty abstract, and some are pretty derpy, like the lion. Um, I mean, actually, I mean, the lion's actually one of the better ones, he's really cute. Um, but yeah, so, you can find those here. I'm not really gonna put them on the workshop, I don't think. They're not good enough for that. I mean, just <laughs> look at the gorilla. <laughs> he is such a mess. But, yeah, if you are interested in them, you can find them here, and you can blueprint them yourself uh, for your own use. Oh, and actually it looks like we are starting to get some visitors who have picked the worst of the viewing areas. <laughs> because of course they would. I mean, it depends on where the tiger is hanging out, of course. Where is the tiger? Where's our boy? What? Oh, he's swimming, of course. <laughs> Alright, I recorded this clip yesterday, but no audio recorded, so we're quickly gonna go over it again, and then we will finish off the episode. Bit of a short one today, but uh, I'm gonna be working on some other stuff, so uh, hopefully the next episode will have a bit more. But here we are at the entrance of the area we've been working on today. As you can see, I've added a bit more foliage around here. We still need to add uh, the little rope fences to continue along this path, but for now, uh, we are good. Um, I don't really feel like doing that quite yet, especially because on this side I don't know how far they go, so that's one of the pictures I'm going to be making when I'm at the zoo next week. But over here we have our zebus. I actually looked up and that's what they're called. Apparently they've been making babies, which I don't want. But yeah, um, <laughs> I said earlier in the episode I never see them swim, but Planet Zoo don't care. <laughs> The animals love swimming in this game for some reason. But as we move along this path, uh, the right side isn't finished yet. The left side is semi-finished. I'm gonna make some more pictures of like how much foliage needs to be here and stuff like that. But for now, oh, uh, for now it's pretty good. Uh, so we've got this little moat and fenced off area of the zebu habitat, which I've now finished. Or Close to finish, it needs more detail in the foliage because it's currently pretty bland still, but that is what it is like. Though I will probably add some metal and stuff like that. And in the back there you can see a pretty cool little shelter building. And we can see this corrugated metal piece that is actually custom made to actually be a bit smaller than the real corrugated metal piece. And you can probably tell, especially if you take a closer look and you see all the little wooden knobs but it looks pretty good in my opinion. I'm actually really happy with what this looks like. And the shelter is actually usable by the Zeebus. So that is also just another huge bonus. And if we take a look back there, we can actually see the same shelter placed down uh, ready for the Indian antelopes. So yeah, moving along, we get to the rest of the tiger habitats. 
there still needs to be a lot of foliage in these parts especially and the viewing areas aren't finished the habitats are mostly finished however uh, again there needs to be more foliage on the backs of it but this is kind of what it's going to be like what also still needs to be done is the shelters which are not going to be functional I'm probably going to hide uh, some staff facilities in them to make sure that this place runs properly but yeah this is what the habitats are like and the tiger is drowning himself that is always a pleasure to see now over here across from the zebu habitat i've also started to work on this little area and it took me a while to kind of figure out how i wanted to do this exactly first i had the plan of using many of the rocks to kind of imitate the very bright yellow dirt that that is here uh, which you'll see in the screenshots at the end uh, but I decided to go with just terrain like this because all of the rocks look way too rocky I guess and right now it actually just looks like sand on top of that this is a lot less work than doing all of that rock placement and since this pattern is kind of going to go all the way around this um, shore I really didn't want to have to do all of that rock placement right now I only have to do a little bit of rock placement and even if I don't do that little bit of rock placement in the end there you're not really gonna notice it that much whereas if I would not do the rock placement at a certain point then you would very clearly notice the difference between the two so yeah that's why I went with the terrain option here and it actually looks really good in my opinion I'm really happy with what this is turning out to be so yeah not a huge amount of progress especially since the things that we did progress on are not nearly finished but my break lasted long enough so i thought i would at least get an episode out because next week i'm going to spend a lot of time with my friends um we are nearing the end of the summer break and one of my friends is actually moving to denmark so we really want to spend some time with him and the week after that is the last week of the summer break so i am going to be spending some time with my girlfriend because we are both going to be very busy after that. So, so yeah, it might be another while before I get an episode out, but in that time I will be visiting the zoo again to make all the pictures of these areas that I need, so that in the next episode we will be able to kind of finish off these areas actually. And in the next episode we will be moving further along this path to the next, which includes the last tiger habitat, the reptile house finally, and Potentially also the next and last aviary. <laughs> Yay! So until then, I want to wish you a very good day and I will see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye!